Do you think CMC is the clear MVP of this team? Or do you think that there's anybody else that has an argument at this point? Uh, offensively? Just the whole team. Let's go yeah. to the whole team right okay. now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go on the other side of the ball. Okay. Um, because I think that I, I, I've tweeted this out multiple times the last several weeks. Javon Hargrave, to me, has been the best player on that defense. He was mm -hmm. the best player on the field today on defense. Uh, getting pressure, just you, you don't see it happen all the time because when you're watching the game on the sideline sideline view, you don't always get to see exactly what he does to wreak havoc and put that pressure on completely. He Without Hargrave, it used to be, I thought, okay, that's a luxury signing. That's an amazing signing. This has looked like an essential signing for the 49ers defense. And so to me, that would be the guy. But on top of IU having a, you know, the season he's having, I just, we could talk up other players, but MVP, I, I don't think there's really another conversation to be quite honest. Uh, we could talk yeah. about other players that are unsung, but guys were most yeah. valuable to the team. I just, with the volume he gets, the snap counts he gets, it's hard for me to go other, anywhere else. Yeah, he's just, uh, I agree. I think it's CMC is the MVP of this team. It's not close. I do like the, the Hargrave shout out. I always love finding a way to sneak in other players that are doing good things. But yes, right now, CMC is the MVP of the offense, or excuse me, MVP of the team. I don't think it's particularly close, but is he the best non-quarterback in the NFL? And the reason that I position it this way, no, it's almost impossible for a non-quarterback to win MVP. It rarely happens, and when it does, you have to have an absolute special Special season. AP, I think, was the last one to do it, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it was 2012 ish, something like that. But CMC is doing some incredible things. So taking quarterbacks out of it, running backs, receivers, tight ends, I, I mean, however you want to look at this, is CMC the best non quarterback in the NFL right now, in your opinion? I mean, that's the, that's the thing that you quibble on, right? How do you define? People talk about this. What do you do? What, what's the definition of in most valuable or best? And I think typically most valuable player goes usually goes to what people think is the best player. Uh, I best non quarterback that is a big in the weeds conversation. I mean, he's right there. Um, I think that typically because MVP tends to be an offensive player, yeah, I do think that Christian McCaffrey, and here's why, uh, even with that box, I think what he had like seven catches today for. 70, 80 yards, uh, he's, and he could have had more. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I think what makes CMC special is the ability to line him up outside and have DBs actually fear him as a route runner, uh, a guy that they also fear that he's not just one of these little delicate dudes that's going to sit there and, like, not put a shoulder into you. Um, he hurts you everywhere. And I, I think for a team like Kyle Shanahan's offense, uh, yeah, I, I think it would be hard not to say it. I always go back on the defensive side of the ball, though. You know, you guys got like Micah Parsons. I didn't, I didn't watch the Cowboys pass game today because I'm watching this one, but I got a feeling the D over there let them. It looks like they let the Pats have it pretty good. Um, there's a guy I fear a lot in Micah Parsons. Uh, Justin Jefferson, as a Minnesota guy, uh, I'm not sure what he did on the field today either, but he's been getting his. Um, but yeah, I, I think CMC deserves. It. I think CMC. People are afraid to tell, say that a running back is the best player, but I don't really look at him as a just a pure running back. I look at him as the premier offensive weapon in the NFL. Yeah, and that's exactly what he is. I mean, <laughs> just, there's really not much that this guy can't do. It, it's just, he's so damn good, man. He is so damn good. And he's, un I mean, he's unstoppable. You you watch all 22 and you just see that players gravitate towards him, And yet he still makes these incredible plays or if he's not making the play, he's the reason that the play on the back end is being made because defenders are just going to him like a magnet. He is so dang good. I, I just, I struggled to think right in, in this moment, who is a better offensive football player in the league than CMC? I mean, he's just, he does everything. He literally does everything. It's hard to pick somebody other than him. <laughs> yeah, no, and I, I think yeah, the conversation's short. I mean, it's it's and right now, if you look at the best team, I mean, you go to I guess maybe if you went over to Philadelphia, um, but I, I feel like as far as you said, non quarterback, uh, I I, I got to say, watch Devontae Smith play today, and that kid is like. I had reservations about his size. I know it's Niners, but boy, that guy's a dog too. I mean, but 
there's some good, as, listen, there's some good football players right. in the league for sure. For yeah. sure, there's some good football players. And I think, you know, the players that I think would come to mind that maybe you could even throw in the conversation, I think a lot of people would say, like Justin Jefferson. Yep. Okay, I understand that. I mean, Tyree, running Tyreek Hill. Running, Tyree Hill, yes, of course. But running back wise, I, I think like CMC is here right now and everybody else is is way behind him. So I think from the running back position, he's got that concrete locked in. It's really just a couple wide receivers that you say, okay, but they they just don't affect the game as much because they don't touch the ball 20 plus times in a game. And CMC does. And most of his runs are, or a lion's share of his runs are between the tackles. He's I think mm -hmm. people felt like before he came to the Niners, like he was almost gadgety in a way. You know, yeah, because he caught yeah. the ball so much, but he's he is a guy you could actually count on to get tough yeah. yards, and and so that's a whole other layer that I think people don't respect. I mean, the league does, but I think some fans might not. Um, but yeah, he. My only fear again is that I hope the volume. Uh, I don't mind the volume right now uh, because he he can take it. He and his injuries in the past have not been you know. Uh, knee joints, knees, bones, things like that, just soft tissue. But I hope they don't have to use them as much as they are throughout the season um, and hope some other guys can step up. Yeah, m most certainly. Elijah Mitchell can't stay healthy still. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. This guy touches the ball once and it's like he gets injured. I think Mason played well today. He came right in. First play that he was in, got a catch. And we, and we saw that. We saw that during... Uh, training camp i mean he was targeted quite a bit he was actually a pretty dang good route runner i think i made note of that a couple times throughout training camp and we know that he runs hard certainly he's no cmc by any means but he's good enough to play right well, so and that play over the middle that was a cmc i think sanchez talked about right when it happened it was like yeah. that's a cmc route like that's something that kyle just screw it we're gonna run this and uh and he did a nice job and actually i thought brock at first was like oh that's bad but Giving it right to him, like a kind of like where he could settle down instead of leading him, uh, yeah. did not lead him into that crashing defender. And he was able to adjust to that. Um, and just his ball security, that's what I'm kind of paying attention to because I knew he had a couple of issues with that and some mm -hmm. preseason stuff in training camp. But, yeah. um, and that's might be why Kyle, too, is a little reluctant to kind of really, uh, you know, RBC to a degree when like the when they're up a lot, but hopefully we can get some bigger leads and hopefully we get some more trust in these guys, because I think CMC is going to need to be spelled uh, before too long. Yeah, most certainly. Joey Mellon says Ertz and AZ almost destroyed the spread. This is why I can't bet. <laughs> this is why I cannot bet. You saw the weirdness at the end of the Rams game, taking the three Ertz and Arizona almost destroyed the spread again. I just, you just can't control it. It's so dang I tough. I just lost yeah. fantasy by point two points because of the last drive of the Cardinals because I was playing the Niners defense. I think they had a grand total of like minus point four points today. Nice job, guys. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Bob says game of the year is Niners and Philly. Book it. We'll see. I mean, we'll yeah. see. You know, Philly has to keep winning. They did win today. One of only two undefeated teams, although it wasn't near as impressive as probably they would want, but they're winning and that's all that matters. It's not, this is the other thing that I think we're starting to figure out. It's not easy to win week in and week out in the NFL. And even if teams aren't winning by a lot or, or a game is a little bit closer, like, oh, I don't know if Arizona should have stuck around the way they did, or I don't know if the Giants and Rams should have stuck around the way they did. Games are hard to win in the NFL, and the 49ers are dominating for the most part in these games. Philly is showing that even at 4-0, it's hard to win in the NFL, so you take a win how you can get it. Brother Bob says, I want us to trade for Sertan or some cornerback weakness. We're going to talk about that in a second, actually. Not Sertan, but just overall some weaknesses. Jamaican Boy says, hey, Jesse, I finally caught a live. Question, is CMC really strong-arming Kyle to make incentives? Even the broadcaster said, give someone else the ball. I don't know what's written into his contract, so I'm not going to say that. But what I will say is I did make an observation after week one being in Pittsburgh to watch the game. CMC has autonomy to decide when he wants to play and when he doesn't. 
there was multiple times they tried to bring him out of the game and he's like, nope, he waves off Mitchell or uh, Mitchell's in there. It looks like they're going to shut him down. And he's like, oh, third down, I'm coming in. So, you know, he wants to play. He's a football player. I don't know if it's incentive driven or, or what have you, but he certainly wants to play if they're going to allow him. 